Good day, YouTube. Warbles on a lot here. Welcome to Moonrise with Frog Song. In 1996, 20 kilometres away on a sheep farm, I found a dozen little critters that I was afraid were baby cane toads. I took them to the Department of Parks and Wildlife, the National Parks and Wildlife Service, and they said, no, no, no. They're not baby cane toads. They're baby Buralong frogs, Latoria Buralongensis. They're rare and threatened. Where did you find them? I told them, and they said, well, they're rare and threatened, so it's okay, you're allowed to bring them in here and show them to us. It's not like they're endangered or anything. And I said, um, if they're rare and threatened and I'm permitted to interfere with them, can I take them away from the sheep farm and let them go on an endangered species sanctuary, which I pay rates on? And they scratched their head and said, yeah, it's not illegal. Go your hardest. So I did. And I brought the baby Buralong frogs here and I let them go in 1996. In 1998, John Dengate, National Parks and Wildlife Service spokesman, was on the radio and he announced that Buralong frogs in the national park system were biologically extinct. So I kept my head down and I kept paying rates and I kept using trespassing sheep for archery practice and the millennial drought rolled along for 10 years. And in 2009, which is 11 years after they were declared biologically extinct, around here the drought had broken. And I counted 180,000 Buralong tadpoles in one dam and I have three dams and they'd colonised 60 acres as well as the three dams. What you're listening to here is the Latoria Buralongensis courting each other around the boy wall tanks which I use to store water in. Right? That's where these Buralong frogs are living around those tanks. And they're courting in the moonlight. At 10.32 p.m. Eastern Daylight Savings Time, at about 22 degrees Celsius, because this is the cool spot in the center of an extreme heat wave. If you go 50 miles north, south, east or west, say 80 kilometers, today their day was horrible, 42 degrees. Here it was 32 degrees. If you go an extra 50 kilometers, particularly out to the west and the southwest, they had a 47 degree day. Like I said, here the Buralong frogs are celebrating because we only had a 32 degree day and it's a 22 degree evening. And the moon is rising. It's high summer. It's a full moon. And they're all looking for partners. If you want to hear frogs in the forest, there's another 10 minutes or so to go. Oh yeah, in 2010, in recognizance of the fact that I had at least 300,000 Latoria Buralongensis living wild on my endangered species sanctuary, they were removed from the biologically extinct list and brought back to being merely endangered. So now I'm not allowed to interfere with them, but I can record them. The fact that I can record them as the moon rises in the forest 
at night during a cool spot in the middle of a heat wave. That's why I jokingly refer to myself as Lord Keeper and Protector of the Burralong Frog. Because they'd be dead if I did not interfere with them. So they accord me some respect and they shut up every time I move. So I'll sit still and let you listen to them. I just waved a torch across the yard. Torch out. Thank <laughs> you. 
Now, I don't know, but I think there's at least two species out there. I think there's Latoria burlongensis or the burlong frog. I think there's also Lassur's frog, but that's just, you know, my guess. And the bottom line, the way I look at it, how do you know your water supply is clean enough to be safe enough to be fit to drink? Well, if frogs won't live in your water supply, it's probably not clean enough to be fit to drink. Because frogs are very, very sensitive to all kinds of chemical pollution. And if frogs won't fuck in your water, it's not fit to drink. In my experience, warbles on a lot to YouTube, moonrise with frog song. Ciao.